talk about quiet luxury and I want to go over specifically what it is and how it's slightly different from iterations that we've seen in the past. And then I also want to dive into a couple things you can keep in mind if you're trying to cultivate this in your own wardrobe. So let's get started. So quiet luxury, also known as stealth wealth or old money aesthetic or how to look expensive are basically just these concepts of attaining something that looks really high end and really luxe, really classic and really timeless and doing so in a way that allows you to wear it with confidence for many years. So what I really love about the rebranding slightly of quiet luxury specifically is that we're seeing a departure slightly from very rigid restraints and very traditional cuts and clothing pieces. And we're seeing some more relaxed takes and things that feel a lot more current. And I think that as long as we can fill this with a concept of high quality and really beautifully made pieces that you know you love, you can build a closet that you can enjoy for a long time. And as you know, that's something that I really love and something that I strive for myself. So when you're trying to attain this in your own wardrobe, I think it's really important here to remember that this can definitely be problematic with how it's rooted in elitism and in excessive spending and this concept of things that are really exorbitantly priced, but they don't really look it or you can't really tell when you first look at something. And if you can remove that part of it and instead start educating yourself on what actually makes something high quality and starting to understand what you love for your own personal wardrobe, you can really lean into the longevity of this and the part that I personally love. So now let's dive into some of the things you can keep in mind if you're looking to achieve this within your own wardrobe. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is understanding high quality and really educating yourself on what makes something high quality or built to last. That way you can really start to get some clarity and not be fooled just by a high price tag. Contrary to what you may have seen, quiet luxury doesn't need to be price tags upwards of the row and prices that are just exorbitant for the average person. And instead, educating yourself as a consumer and really becoming knowledgeable on what your money is actually buying and how that can last for many years, it's going to serve you really well. And it's something I recommend spending the time here. So rather than going out and just buying something with a brand name or buying something that someone is telling you is high luxury or quiet luxury, you're better off understanding why it costs that and if that's something you personally want to spend or if you can find something just as beautiful for a lower price and something that allows you to then spend your money on other things. So it's not just entire wardrobe spending, but rather a well-rounded person. You can travel, you can go to restaurants, experience things and look great while you do them. The next thing you can keep in mind is clothing that feels a little bit formal. So when we are trying to cultivate this aesthetic and something that feels a little bit classic and timeless, that type of dressing tends to be very fluid in where it's going to go and what um, events it's going to suit. So you're never too dressed up or too dressed down. And instead you're kind of right in the middle and you can go from work to weekend to after activities, dinner and stuff like that. And it all blends really seamlessly. So a good thing to keep in mind is to maybe avoid jeans. That's an easy way to ensure that you're never too dressed down. But if you want to make it feel a little bit more current, which is what I'm really loving at the moment, going for a pair of really beautiful beautifully finished jeans. Something in a really nice dark denim, something in a mid-wash can feel a little bit casual sometimes, but something with no distressing is a very nice way to go. And you can then pair that with your structured pieces and get a really beautiful modern take on this. The next thing you can keep in mind if you're looking to cultivate a quiet luxury aesthetic is to avoid logos. And this is something we've seen progressing over the last couple years as it's kind of infiltrated fashion on all levels. But the point here is is that when you wear an obvious logo, you align yourself with that brand. And certain brands maybe don't have the entire personality trait that you're looking for. So in order to distance yourself from that, go for the pieces without obvious logos. And then within the context of quiet luxury and how we're understanding it as kind of a, if you know, you know type of concept, 
a logo tends to be a very clear price indicator. So if someone can see a logo on your clothing, they kind of have an idea of how much you spend. And you want to avoid that if this is your aesthetic. And instead, go for something that you can't really tell. It could be really expensive, it could have been affordable, but the common thread is that it's beautifully made and it suits you perfectly. Keeping this idea of longevity in mind and building a closet that you can enjoy for a long time and then not feel so guilty if you spend a little bit more on a piece, you're going to want to spend time finding those classic styles for your personal style in your wardrobe. The things that are very moderate, they're not too extreme. They're not too extreme in their color or their shape or their construction. They lie kind of in the middle and they can mix and match seamlessly. You can dress them up, you can dress them down, and you can wear them across all four seasons. And this is going to be really beneficial as you develop your style because as you're buying those higher quality pieces, you'll be able to wear them for a really long time because they won't feel dated. So typically speaking, something that feels moderate is going to be classic. So a straight leg pair of jeans versus something really skinny. And then something that is a little bit more extreme is going to be trendier. So in that case, that would be a wider leg, something a little bit baggier. Sticking right in the middle is going to be your safest bet. My next tip is to develop your personal color palette and definitely keep the foundational colors in mind, but also go out of your way to customize everything. So as you're finding these classic pieces, spend time finding the colors that you love and thus the colors that mix and match really well within your wardrobe. So when you think about old money or classic style or this quiet luxury aesthetic, we tend to see a lot of very corporate feeling colors. Those are going to be things like navy, white, off-white, camel, burgundy, and a lot of gray. And those colors are really great because they're easy to find. But within that, it's so important that you find the ones that you actually love and those that make you feel great. So I really love navy, but I if maybe you're going to wear navy and feel too corporate and it's just not going to work for the longevity of your personal style in that case it doesn't matter if someone else is recommending that color if you're going to buy it and then not wear it it's not benefiting your style so spend time here finding those core colors that are easy and accessible but then personalize them for you so maybe instead of a camel go for a taupe color and really have fun customizing it because when you customize everything it injects this feeling that someone has done that for you and that is incredibly luxurious and my last tip is to keep your prints on the smaller side so much like i mentioned earlier about how things should feel a little bit formal typically speaking a smaller print is going to feel a little bit more formal than a larger one anything a little bit over the top is going to stand out as kind of fashiony and this aesthetic really comes down to feeling very classic and and kind of an undetectability associated with it. So if you're taking like a striped shirt, for example, which is an incredibly classic wardrobe piece, going for a broader stripe is gonna feel a little bit more current and modern, but going for something a little bit smaller, that's gonna feel more corporate and more classic. So choosing one that's perfect for you is gonna inject that customization. So I hope that these tips are helpful for you. And as you're developing your personal style, I know that I personally have followed advice blindly in the past, but I've really shifted my focus in the last few years to really encourage personalization and really take my own advice for that as well. And even though I'm seeing something recommended or seeing something look really great on someone else, having the confidence to then tweak that for myself and then have the confidence to wear it the way that I feel best. So I always recommend that for you as well. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.